Hello and welcome to Guitar Techniques. This is lesson number nine and the title of today's lesson is That Rundown. You need to uh, download and print out exercise 16 and what we're going to do here, we're going to do uh, a very kind of corny but very useful rundown uh, from G to E minor, from C to A minor and from F to D minor. So it's essentially the same thing uh, but in, in three different keys. Uh, when we do the first one, we're going from G to E minor, so it's from the G chord to E minor, which is the relative minor of G, and from C to A minor, A minor is the relative minor of C, and from F to D minor, D minor is the relative minor of F. When we say that E minor is the relative minor of G, G is the relative major of E minor. When we say that A minor is the relative minor of C, we can also say that C major is the relative major of A minor. And similarly, if we say that D minor is the relative minor of F, then F is the relative major of D minor. That's just some theory stuff for you there. If you're not interested in that, it's absolutely fine. So yeah, exercise 16. I hope you've got that all printed out and uh, on your table as you're watching this video. Uh, let's just play the whole thing through for you. So I've made it so it's like a complete piece of music, but you could just use the individual two bar phrases. For instance, this one. So it's a typical G running down to E minor using an F sharp as the, the note that kind of glues it all together. So we start off with one of these simple G picking chords, third finger, third fret, bass, E string is all you need. And you pick the E string, the D string and the G string thumb, thumb index, and then you lift that third finger, put the second finger down behind the second fret, so next to our neighbour, second fret of the low E string, that's the low F sharp, and you pick the E string, the B string, keep that finger on, uh, E string, B string, D string, G string, and the timing there is three and four and, so the overall timing is one, two and three and four and. So it's crotchet and then three pairs of quavers and essentially you're going from a G chord to a D with an F sharp bass. If we put D, oblique stroke, F sharp, we mean D with the F sharp bass. You couldn't strum these chords, they only work as long as you're picking these strings. And obviously that's crying out to go to the E minor. You can either finger a full E minor, second fret of the A, second fret of the D, or just put your finger on the second fret of the D, that's all you actually need. Because in bar two you're playing the E string, uh, open D string second fret, open G, open E, open B, second fret the D, open G, thumb, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index. So there's your first pattern. And you can hear that very uh, corny but classic rundown. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and so same timing for both bars. So that's how we do it when we want to go from G to E minor. Let's do a similar thing. This time we're going to go from C to A minor. So we could put all three fingers down of a C chord. We actually only need fingers three and two. Finger three behind the third fret of the A, finger two behind the second fret of the D. We pick the A string, D string, G string. And then we take that chord off, we put our second finger behind the second fret of the A string. When we pick these strings, it's a G with a B bass. And we pick A string, B string, D string, G string. So lots of open strings there. So we've got thumb, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index. That's our picking. One, two, and three, and four, and and then we do put on a full A minor because we need all three fingers of this. And typical claw hammer, uh, A in strings, it's A, D, G, A, B, D, G. Thumb, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index. One, two, and three, and four, and. Let's listen to that two bar pattern. So let's listen to the first four bars and the G to E minor and the C to A minor.
Now let's do the same thing from F to D minor. And we're going to hold down an F chord. We actually don't need to flatten the first finger, which is good news because that's the hardest part of an F chord. You can just arch the first finger so it's only on the B string. And we pick the D string, the G string, the B string, thumb, thumb index. One, two, and is the counting. Then we change chord to a C of the knee bass. So our first finger stays where it is. Second finger goes behind the second fret of the D string. So in actual fact, it's two thirds for C chord, isn't it? And we pick D string, E string, G string, B string, three and four and. So we go from F to C of the E bass. One, two and three and four and. And then we hold down a proper D minor chord. If you don't know this chord, it is as follows. First finger, first fret of the E string. That's the high pitched D string. Second finger, second fret of the G string. Third finger, third fret of the B string. Quite a stretchy chord because obviously the frets are quite a long way away from each other down this end of the guitar. And in this bar I decided to do uh, an alternating bass. So the thumb goes D, G, A, G in uh, strings. So it's D string, G string, B string, A string, E string, G string, B string. Thumb, thumb, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index. So F to D minor sounds like this. And to finish off, so we've got something nice to round the thing off with, just C chord, alternating bass, typical claw hammer. Now I move my third finger over. I spoke about this in the previous lesson. Uh, you could put a four fingered C down, so you could put your little finger behind the third fret of the A, your third finger behind the third fret of the bass C, then you wouldn't have to move anything. But I just personally, I suppose because I enjoy doing it, I, I like moving my third finger over. In my mind, it kind of um, emphasizes that first and fifth kind of, maybe stops it ringing on too much. So that's our exercise 16, that rundown. That's a lovely little pattern you can just use, you know, the individual parts of that for whatever key you're in. It's a good thing to remember when you want to glue a G to an E minor or a C to an A minor or an F to a D minor. So there we are, that's the end of this lesson. Just a nice little short one for you there. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Please do press that like button and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Please also press the bell button and every time I upload to YouTube, you'll get a notification. Thanks very much for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.